Right then, folks, hello there again. Uh, it's me, and from the Referee Forum. Today, what I'd like to do is um, revisit something from uh, just over a year ago. The Guardian newspaper here in the UK ran a feature called Blood, Sweat and Fears, a special report on abuse towards grassroots referees. Has anything changed in the year since it was made? I still say to this day, if it happened on a night out or in a public place, they would have all been arrested, but because it's on a football pitch, it seems a blind eye is turned to it. Let's have a look at what happened this year uh, with Satyam Toki. Uh, he was punched three times on a football pitch. If that happened on the street, you can guarantee that there would be more uh, action taken than a simple caution. Of, you know, the guy got banned from football for, for 10 years, but come on, 10 years? If the guy's like young, he's playing again by the time he's 30. It's craziness. And if it was uh, out on the street, you can guarantee there would be more than a slap on the wrist. So Sunday morning in South Manchester, we're here to meet Ryan Hampson, who is a young amateur referee who has previously received verbal and physical abuse. In 2017, Ryan organised a nationwide strike to raise awareness of the issues facing grassroots officials and has previously campaigned to wear a body cam during matches. Body cams! Well, we all know where, where I stand on that. Traffic wardens can have them, police can have them. Why can't referees? The only reason referees can't have them is that the International FA Board and FIFA have written into their laws that referees can't wear uh, body cam. Why would they do that? Like, really, why would they do that? Uh, over the years of me being a referee in the, la in the last four and a half years, I've been headbutted, I've been punched, I've been spat at. Today there was no signs of any of that happening at all. I've heard of Ryan, never met the guy, but he seems like a sound lad. Now, in 2017 when he called for like the strike, I was living in Spain at the time. A huge respect campaign, loads of money pumped into it, big name celebrities. But on the back of that, nothing actually really changed. So I think if, if I was in the UK in 2017 and things like this were still happening, and if, if you know, in Ryan's situation, the, to be the victim of physical uh, assaults and abuse, I'd, I'd, I think I'd be striking. If I was in the country 2017, I'd have gone on strike. Solidarity. Now we know for a fact as a charity, with our hotline, the amount of calls we've received on abuse and assaults that have then gone to appeal and been not proven, we know that there's at least two assaults on referees a week, without a doubt. Anything at all that anyone suggests that will help referees is great. However, all I see is a lack of people suggesting things. Good luck with your season, lads. Which goes to show if you feel and think that you're by yourself, you're not. There's literally hundreds and thousands of other referees that are feeling exactly what you're feeling if you're on the receiving end of, of, uh, of abuse, of intimidation, of all that sort of stuff that we go through as referees. You're not alone. So Ella, we're back on the pitch where the incident happened. Can you tell me a little bit more about what happened that day? So left winger was running down the wing, um, was intercepted by the right back. There was a late tackle, it was, it was quite a bad challenge. I would have originally given a red card anyway to the player because um, it was quite dangerous. And then, then that led to sort of home team and away team um, all getting involved um, and sort of a mass brawl breaking out in front of the dugouts. As a referee, I was always taught with mass brawls actually to step back, um, don't get involved, um, so that actually you can see everything that's going on. I know if I'd got involved in something like that, I would have got very hurt. The sort of second thing we're taught is actually because of a mass brawl, you can't see everything that everyone does and to just sort of even it up and go, OK, in my head I knew I'm going to send two of the away team off, two of the home team off. Um, went to send two of the away team off and the manager followed me around um, the centre circle telling me that I didn't know how to do my job. I actually felt quite threatened at that time. He was much bigger than me, he was much taller and he was obviously quite aggressive because of the incident that had happened. So once everything died down, did the game resume or was it abandoned? I didn't want to abandon the game. It's mad though, isn't it? You know, as referees, we just want the game to continue. We want to get those 90 minutes in no matter what happens. She'd been well within her rights to just abandon that game, given those circumstances. But there's something in us as referees that just want to get the game done. So football is perceived to be uh, worse in terms of abuse than other sports, but what have you found with other sports, such as uh, rugby union and cricket? Referees are not, or umpires are not as abused as often. Um, the frequency isn't as great, but we were still finding around about the 50% mark and higher being verbally abused 
um, at some point, which again, in those sports is, is high. You wouldn't expect it to be that high. But the MCC acted quite quickly, so they've brought in red cards, for example, for umpires. So that's coming globally um, because they realised that there was uh, there were incidents of abuse that were starting to escalate. That's interesting because the MCC has a, a reputation as being a kind of traditional old governing body, uh, but it's actually acted in a really proactive, stern way here with, to implement real change. And that's sort of what people want to see from the FA, isn't it? We do have to do something, you know. I think we're, we're getting to the point in the research, certainly evidences that, that, that we're, these incidents are, are happening and they're relatively frequent and um, that something needs to happen. He's perfectly said that something needs to happen. Listen to me now. If you're in a position of power somewhere in the game of football, something needs to happen. We were saying it a year ago. We were saying it five years ago. And something doesn't mean putting banners up around a football pitch. It doesn't mean having handshakes before the game that mean literally nothing. Something substantial, like what the Netherlands did for their game, needs to happen. One of the first leagues in the country to introduce the Purple Shirts Initiative. Referees under the age of 18 wear a different colour shirt and a bid to reduce abuse from both supporters and players. So hopefully it'll make it a better game and enjoyable for all. Again, I think these initiatives work at the start when they're first brought in. But old behaviours creep in all the time. There needs to be a fundamental change in people's attitudes and their th way of thinking. As somebody that goes out and deals with referees on the ground every week, what do you think kind of your, your biggest challenge is uh, in combating abuse? So, so many challenges in refereeing. I mean, you, you have to look at the physical aspects of getting more. Constantly, every week, you're developing your softer skills. So your communication is key. Your conflict management is key. You talk about abuse. That with, with experience comes in how to manage things, how to conflict manage better, how to communicate better, how to manage a game of football better. OK, these guys are chatting, uh, obviously, from FA Core. Um, but what needs to, I think, really be implemented is uh, across the board training for all referees, not just the ones that have been earmarked to progress quicker or the young ones. Every referee needs continual development. Uh, and that, that, I think, includes um, updates on the laws of the game. You can't rely, I think, on the referees associations that are voluntary to join to be the ones that implement these updates to the laws for, for all referees locally. But one of the biggest problems here is that the onus is on the individual to report the abuse. And so many referees have lost faith in the system. So much so that they won't report the incident in the first place or, like Ella, they fall out of the game entirely. Uh, has anything changed since this? Hard to say. We've seen the rollout of the purple shirts. We've seen the rollout of the purple shirts, but also, um, I mean, that can be quite an expensive thing for all under 18 referees to get an additional or a, a special shirt. Um, so there's uh, yellow armbands that, that these new or young referees can wear as well. Um, but you still see on ref support, on the referee forum, on the, on the various uh, refereeing groups on social media, regardless of the, the colour of the shirt, the age of the referee, those referees are still getting abused. Whilst it's a step in the right direction, it doesn't solve the problem. And I don't think one thing will solve the problem. It needs to be a top-down mentality. People's thinking of the game is driven by what they see in the Premier League, the elite level of football. And I think if those elite referees just absorb the abuse from those elite players, the parks and the amateurs think that they can do the same as well. Of course, everyone wants to be the next Ronaldo or Messi, but even those two have had their run-ins with referees. I think when we're talking about a change of mentality, we need to just think of the entire grassroots football community as one community, not us and them, not players and referees, not referees and coaches. We all want the same thing. We really, truly do. We all want to go out there and enjoy football, regardless of what our role is. I think we all just need to get on the same page and just appreciate what all the individuals do to bring together this one whole. Respect is something that I think has just become a buzzword. It's not shown, it's not displayed, it's not promoted in any way, shape or form, apart from just being a, a banner. And that's really sad. That's really sad. I don't know the answers. I'm just asking the questions. What do you think? You can leave some comments below about what you thought of this video. 
what you'd like to see in future videos, um, what you want to see discussed. If you've got any match incidents as well that you want to bring up in the Final Whistle podcast with myself, Martin or Nathan, as always, I've been Ant from the Referee Forum. All right, cheers for watching. Adios, muchachos.